Hello, my name is Brian Atkinson and welcome once again to UK Aircraft Explored. In today's video, we shall be covering the Avro Lancaster's fuel system. We shall be referring to the wartime air ministry manuals that were used by air and ground crews at the time. Hope you find this interesting. We shall begin with a brief overview of the Lancaster's engine installation. The power plant installation of Lancaster B1 and B3 aircraft incorporate Merlin 20 and Merlin 28 or 38 engines respectively, with de Havilland or Nash Calvinator hydromatic constant speed propellers and two speed superchargers. They are pressure cooled with radiators and oil cooler mounted beneath the engine. The Merlin 20 and Merlin 28 or 38 engines are generally similar except that the latter are equipped with Stromberg injection carburetors requiring a vapour vent system and electro-pneumatically operated slow running cutout controls and do not have the cylinder heads integral with the cylinder blocks. A subframe of tubular construction attached to the main plane front spar supports the engine mounting frame and fireproof bulkhead in each engine nacelle. The cowling and fairings are made up of quickly detachable panels. The fuel tanks are mounted in the main plane and the oil tanks in the engine subframe. Now let's look at the Lancaster's fuel system. The fuel system consists of separate port and starboard systems connected by a cross feed pipe. On each side of the fuselage, three fuel tanks are fitted in the main plane and numbered 1, 2 and 3, outboard from the fuselage. Lancaster's incorporating mod 539 have pulsometer FB Mark I pumps instead of the immersed pumps. Fuel is drawn by the engine or electric pumps from number 1 or number 2 tanks through a suction bypass to the tank selector cocks from which a separate supply is run to each engine carburetor through the master engine cock, the fuel filter and engine driven fuel pump. The number 3 tanks are arranged to refuel the number 2 tanks only. In each inboard nacelle is an induction priming pump connected to the two engines on the same side. A fuel jettison system is fitted in each number one tank. Boost gauges, electrical fuel contents gauges, fuel pressure warning lamps and switches for the electric pumps are all provided in the cockpit. The fuel systems of Mark 1 and 3 aircraft differ in that the Stromberg carburetors of the Merlin 28 or 38 engines are provided with a vapour vent system feeding back to the number two fuel tanks and operated by higher fuel pressure. The pressure warning lamps are set at 10 pounds per square inch instead of six pounds per square inch of Merlin 20 engines. A pressure reducing valve between the engine fuel pump and the carburetor is fitted on the Merlin 20 engines only. The six fuel tanks are secured by steel straps in special bearer ribs extending between the main plane spars. The port and starboard number one tanks, each of 580 gallons capacity, are fitted one on each side of the fuselage in five bearer ribs. The number two and number three tanks are mounted in the outer main plane on either side of the outer engine nacelle and are of 383 and 114 gallons capacity respectively. Three bearer ribs, that's the centre portions of ribs 19, 20 and 21, support the number two tank. And two ribs, that's the centre portions of ribs 12 and 13, support the number three tank. The number two and number three tanks are positioned by end supporting brackets on the ribs at the inboard ends. The tanks are fitted or removed through openings in the under surface of the main plane. 
a single detachable access panel being provided below each tank. The projection of the sump and pulsar meter pump when fitted is accommodated by a blister which also forms an access door. Doors also give access to the strap adjusters for number two and three tanks and hinge doors for the jettison pipes are formed in the panels below the number one tanks. In the upper surface of the main plane, doors secured by Zeus fasteners are fitted above the fuel tank's filler caps and inspection doors above the electrical service and pipe connections to the tanks. All the tanks are generally of similar construction. The shell is of light alloy sheet with welded joints and is stiffened by top hat section stringers spot welded to the shell and by baffles which are bolted to the stringers. The baffles which are flanged have additional angles spot welded to the upper and lower edges. Vertical top hat section stiffeners and flanged lightning holes in the web. Each tank has a filler cap, an electrical fuel gauge transmitter connected to a gauge on the flight engineer's instrument panel. To ensure an accurate reading in the number one tanks, a small sump is also provided to receive the float of the fuel gauge. Dipsticks for ground use are stowed on the port side of the fuselage, just after the main entrance door. Access doors are provided in the top of number one and number three tanks, and a single large access door in the bottom of number two tank. Access to the interior of number one tank may also be obtained by removal of the jettison valve. A self-sealing protective covering is cemented over the whole surface of the tanks. The edges are secured with flange clamping rings where the covering is broken for fittings, except at the access doors, which are covered by doped on rib patches. A separate vent pipe is provided for each tank and is taken down to the undersurface of the main plane near the rear outboard corner of the tank. When pulsar meter pumps are fitted, fuel is delivered from the tank through a strainer fitted with a vortex eliminator. The strainer is mounted inside the tank, immediately above the sump, and the tank shell is stiffened locally to support these fittings. The electric fuel pumps, which are controlled by switches on the flight engineer's panel, are used for carburetor priming and for supplementing the engine fuel pumps during takeoff at high altitudes and when cross feeding from one fuel tank to the engines on the opposite side. The suction bypass allows fuel to be drawn from the tanks by the engine pumps when the electric pumps are not in use. In aircraft equipped with pulsar meter pumps, a projecting sump is attached beneath each fuel tank. The sump is provided with three outlets, of which one in the bottom is closed by a drain plug, while the pump is attached to the rear outlet. The fuel jettison system provides for the speedy release of the fuel in the number one tanks only. In each number one tank are fitted a jettison valve and an air inlet valve which are hydraulically operated by a control valve handle on the port side of the pilot's floor. Attached to the jettison valve is a double walled stocking, the lower end of which rests on the hinged door of the number one tank access panel. This door is normally secured by a retaining washer and shear collar on the end of a spindle projecting from the centre of the valve. When the valve is opened to jettison the fuel, the spindle is withdrawn, the washer broken and the door released. The stocking pipe then extends to the length of approximately 4 foot 6 inches and the walls fill with fuel, holding it semi-rigid to carry the escaping fuel clear of the main plane. The fuel cocks and controls of the port and starboard sections of the fuel system are arranged similarly, 
on the flight engineers panel. On each side, fuel from the number one and number two tanks are delivered through separate pipes to a tank selector cock on the front face of the front spar between the inboard nacelle and the fuselage. By means of this cock, either the number one or number two tanks can be selected to feed both engines on that side. Fuel cannot be supplied from both these tanks at once. The tank selector cock has also an off position. The number three tank is controlled only by its electric pump, by means of which the fuel is transferred to the number two tank. A transfer safety valve is fitted on the union on the latter to prevent fuel siphoning from the number three tank. Fuel passes from the tank selector cock to the cross feed pipe and to the master engine cocks, which give individual control of the supplies to the engines. The master cock for the inboard engine is incorporated with the tank selector cock, but the master cock for the outboard engine is a separate unit. The master cock control levers are mounted on each side of the pilot's control quadrant in the cockpit, and the selector cock controls projects through the flight engineer's panel. The controls are connected by means of rods, chains, and sprockets with the fuel cocks. The stopcock in the cross feed pipe is located at the centre of the fuselage in front of the front spar and is operated through a hole below the step on the front spar cover. This cock is normally kept shut. Up to seven gallons of fuel per hour may be returned to the tank by each engine through the vent system, and number two tank should therefore always be used for takeoff in order to avoid the return of fuel to a tank already full. A key gas type B priming pump serving the two inboard engines is mounted on the accessories panel attached to the undercarriage support beams in each inboard nacelle. Fuel is drawn from the sump of number one tank and is pumped to the engine induction pipes. A separate stopcock and delivery pipe been provided between the pump and each engine. When the engine starts, the stopcock must be shut and kept shut. The boost gauges are mounted on the pilot's instrument panel and are connected to the engines by pipes which run down the starboard side of the fuselage and outboard in each direction along the front spar to the fuel traps on the fireproof bulkheads. The boost cutout control lever is on the extreme left of the pilot's engine control pedestal. And now for a selection of my fuel system related photos. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing. And also click the bell, remember it's free and you'll receive notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.